we are working in Excel module four, the Conyers Law Offices Create a Loan Analysis Project. First thing we want to do is go to row one and resize it to a height of 8.25 to get rid of some of this blank space at the top of our document. So I'm going to highlight that and move that to 8.25. Then we want to change the defined name in D4. D4 has a defined name of date. Since we're using not using this in formulas, we really don't need a defined name, so we want to delete that. So up here in the Formulas tab, we have our Name Manager. We're going to select Date, and then Delete. We do want to name cells D5 through D7 and F5 through F7 so that the name of the cell indicates what is being shown in the cell. To do that, we're going to go to D5 and right click, go down to define a name, and Excel automatically goes over and looks in the adjoining cell, adjacent cell, and says loan amount. That's correct. Say OK. Do the same thing in D6. Right click, define name. Then OK. We're going to do the same thing in D7. Right click in D7. Define name. OK. And we're going to do the same thing over in F5, F6, and F7. So we've got our cells named. Now we need to calculate the monthly payment for our loan. Uh, we can use a formula that, use, that helps us create that. So we're going to go to F5. And up in the Formulas tab, we have Financial. And we are going to go to the Payment function, or PMT. Brings up a box over here. And now we're just going to list our arguments. Our rate is we want to take our rate and divide that by 12 because we want a monthly payment. NPR is number of periods or number of payments. And we're going to take our term. That's a 10 year. We're going to multiply that by 12. So we have the total number of payments. And our present value, which would be the loan amount. And we're going to say OK. So our monthly payment except that it's negative. Now, the bank isn't going to pay us to take a loan out. We need to pay the bank. So to do that, we're going to come up here into our formula bar, and right after the equal sign, we're going to make that a minus, and hit Enter, and it's going to make that a positive amount. So we will be paying the bank $3,937.24 a month for our loan. We want to calculate what our total interest is going to be for this loan. So we need to enter a formula that is going to multiply 12 by the term and the monthly payment and then subtract the loan amount so that we can figure out what our total interest is going to be. So it's going to be equals 12 because it's a 12 in a month times the term time the monthly payment minus our loan amount. Oh, did something backwards. Oh, let's just delete that and start all over. Our total interest is going to be equals 12 times the term times monthly payment minus the loan amount. There we go. So our total interest is going to be $145,000. So what's the total cost of our loans going to be? It's going to be our loan amount plus our total interest. So we're going to say equals loan amount plus total interest. So we want to figure out, if we have it, different interest rates, what would our monthly payments be? So we can do that by creating a 
one variable data table that uses our rate in D6 um, as our column input cell. So the first thing we're going to do is select the range that we want to show our table. And that's going to be C11 down to F26. Up here on the data tab, we're going to come over here to the what if analysis, which is one of our forecast tools. We're going to look at data table. Now we don't want a row input cell, we just want a column input cell, and we want our column input cell to be D6, that rate. We say OK. So we can automatically look now and see what our monthly payments would be if we could get a different interest rate. We want to know if one of our interest rates is the same as our interest rate that they have placed in our loan payment calculator. So to do that, we're going to do conditional formatting. We're going to do a match. So we're going to go select C12 to C26, because this is our list of rates. On our Home tab, we're going to go to conditional formatting. Highlight cell rules. You want equal to. We want to equal something or match something. We want it to match D6. And we want to format it green fill with dark green text. Say so, OK. So now we can see that, yeah, one of these interest rates is the one that they've quoted us. OK, we do have an, an, an amortization schedule that has been started to be filled out. We want to figure out year one, how much interest are we going to have paid and clear on through the life of the loan. So they've already started that. If I click on J5, you can see we have a little bit of an if formula going. We need to now um, add um, present value function in here. And so we're going to put it right in between the two commas there. We want to enter a present value. So we're going to come up here to formulas, financial, and come down here and select present value, which is PV. The rate, we're going to take our rate and divide that by 12. Our number of payments we are going to subtract the year value from the term. So we're going to select term minus the year value, which you see here in H5. And then in our payment, we want to enter the monthly payment as a negative value, so it comes back positive. So I'm going to set negative monthly payment, and then I'm going to say OK. To finish filling out my schedule, I'm going to copy the information in J5 down to J14. And I did something wrong. Let me see. So this should be rate divided by 12. I need a term minus H5 in parentheses times 12. That's where I messed up. I want the term times 12 because it's looking at yearly information. So let's hit the enter here and see what happens. And then I still need to comp copy the new formula down. There we go. Um, and I entered that formula incorrectly. I need that term should have been term minus H5 times 12 in my formula. Put 
this down here again correctly. I'm going to come down here and select my chart. Up here in my chart design format, I've got my shape outline. I want it to be lavender. Then I'm going to go back up here to shape outline, and I want the weight to be one and a half. Then I'm going to come back to the chart design because I want to add some elements. I want to add the data table at the bottom of my principal and interest paid, and I want it to include the legend keys so people can look at the lines or they can actually look at the numbers if they want more information. Now, Nadia was also planning on determining the cost estimates, but she's decided not to. So we need to just delete this cost estimate worksheet. So we're going to delete that. And then we're going to figure out our retirement projection. She wants to compare the future value of three different retirement plan projections. So we're going to go to C10 and add a formula to determine our future values. We're going to go to financial, FV for future value, and we want to add the rate, which is in C6. Our number of payments is in C8, and our actual payment is in C7. Say OK. And then I'm going to copy that over to E10. So now I can compare my different retirement plans. To save this, I'm going to close my worksheet, go back to my assignment, I'm going to submit it, and for a grade. 100 out of 100. So hopefully, if you didn't get 100 out of 100, go back in and look through your graded report and make changes as needed and resubmit for a higher grade.